Hi there, welcome to another Astro Harry video and uh, this is a video I've been wanting to do for a long time and I would thought I would do it about the weather. So obviously the weather is the most frustrating and important aspect of our hobby and I get asked a lot about which sites and which um, apps are best for telling the, the weather from our point of view because we need to plan these things, we need to pick targets, objects, um, know if we're going to be up until three in the morning and all that sort of things as well. So um, so yeah, it's a really important thing for us. Hello, Toby. Uh, Toby's interested in the weather as well, aren't you, Toby? Good lad. Good lad. So what I thought I'd do was go through a few different sites and then um, we can, uh, you know, I can show you my methodology. I'm aware that not every website is available in every country and, you know, different parts of the world have different sort of weather, uh, you know, impacts. But um, this is where I'm going anyway with this. So the first website um, I'd like to show you is the Clear Outside website. So this is a really popular um, website that loads and loads of people use. Um, it's it's by astronomers for astronomers, so obviously that's a really important part. So um, it's dead easy to use, and I will put the links to all these things into the um, into this sort of the, the descriptions below. So I'm just picking up my hometown, and then here we go. So um, the first thing that you'll notice is it's very colourful, so that's brilliant. So in really simple terms, green's good. Orange, not so sure. Red's bad. But what's really nice about Clear Outside is that um, you can open out each day and it will drill into detail. So you can actually sort of see um, uh, for yourself why it's come to those conclusions. Uh, it also gives you loads of astronomical stuff like the International Space Station, the, the phases of the moon. Also, this is really nice, this, um, this area here. So it shows you when the astronomical darkness is so that's really helpful as well so this is um this is a clear winner for me it's always my first go-to because it gives me a good a good um indication what's happening the only sort of real negative i have about it is it's very uh, pessimistic i often find that um that, that the oranges can sometimes be absolutely fine for astro um so uh, that's what i sort of find as well but you know it's it's good to look at that so this is usually my first um, go to the second one is the met office website so the met office website um i'm pretty sure it's a global thing but it's certainly for the uk for this country it's fine um and it's a it's a general weather forecasting uh website rather than being an astro but i find it to be the most accurate so let's for example we'll look at tomorrow there we go clear skies brilliant let's go and get this galaxy season isn't it let's go and shoot some galaxies so i find that's really really um accurate and helpful and then the sort of third website that i go to is the Matteo blue website um now this is a really really good website for astro uh it's not quite as detailed as say for example um uh, clear outside or um or the Met Office, but I find it's really helpful. Um, and it has lots of information. It can be a little daunting to start off with, but uh, it, it's it's really useful. So the first thing to notice is that your, your first three columns here are the cloud cover, so low, medium, and high. So straight away, if I skip to tomorrow, you can see that there's lots of zeros here. So brilliant, so that means it's gonna be clear, which is really good. But what also it does is that this sort of pack of refreshers thing that's going on is showing you the seeing. Um, so I'll come on to seeing in a little bit, but seeing is really, really important for going after certain object types. So again, the colors are important. You want greens, oranges, you don't want reds. Um, so this is a sort of, you know, typically it's an okay night for sort of seeing, which is great. Then the last thing is that it gives you the planets, which is really nice. So that right hand column, it, it shows you when the planets are visible. So it just gives you a little sort of uh, um, like reminder that, say, for example, tomorrow night, Venus and um, and Mars are going to be visible. So that's um, that's really good, really good indeed. Um, the other couple of sites I'm going to mention are the BBC website, which is terrible. I mean, it's always miles off. Um, I really have a problem with this. It's never right. Um, yeah, and it, it's often very pessimistic as well. So um, it'll often say it's partially cloudy when it's absolutely fine. And then the other one is this is quite a nice site. So this is um, Meteor Radar and it shows the cloud coverage and it's really nice how it does it. So you can actually see a, a map of cloud cover. So um, you can get a good idea of where the cloud's going to be. 
So I'll just um, pause it and get it back to sort of today. So uh, the, the, the one thing about this is it say it's going to be clear tonight and it's not going to be clear tonight. I can tell you that now. So this is now, now-ish. And yes, it is cloudy, but it's saying that it's going to be clear and everywhere else is saying it's not going to be clear. So, um, but it gives you an idea about the trends and things. So, um, so they're the sort of the, the, the sites that I like to use. So there's three things that are really, really important. That I need to mention to you. So first thing is seeing. So we'll hop back onto, um, onto this site. So the seeing is important if you are doing um, high focal length targets. So what do we mean by that? So we mean things like planets. So if you want to do Saturn's rings, uh, Jupiter's, uh, the markings on Jupiter, moon, you know, that sort of thing. Seeing is really important for that because you're using lots of magnification. You're using either a, a big bucket scope or Barlow's or whatever. So you need the seeing to be um, to be to be nice. Um, what is seeing? Um, well, that's an Astro Harry video <laughs> on its own, but in simple terms it's the turbulence in the atmosphere so uh if you think about when you uh if you if you hold up a flame and you look through it you'll notice all the the air moves around then the atmosphere is no different so you get turbulence in the air and some of it's heat rising some of it's a jet stream there's there's there's, there's lots of um lots of reasons that uh, that we get this sort of turbulence so you want to have that scene the other thing is, is if you're doing certain type of dso's so deep sky deep uh, deep deep sky objects you know you want you want good scene for them but usually um seeing doesn't come into it too much because you're taking long exposures you're doing stacking you know there's, there's there's lots of different sort of things there as well um that's the first thing to be um to, to be aware of the second thing is to be aware of your own local conditions so what these websites aren't very good at apart from the the general ones like the bbc ones is um is things like fog mist um local local conditions so what you need to do is just to make sure that you're aware that there's a potential so i live near the coast so if i know the wind's blowing in a certain direction and it's been hot through the day i know there's every chance of having a sea fret or fog or mist or or or, or whatever and then the third thing not to ignore is the wind um the wind is a really really important factor in all of this um so you know clear outside gives you the wind speeds and there's, there are other websites that do that as well um so it's there's no good at being crystal clear in mean 30 mile an hour winds because obviously you're just not going to get anything done um astronomically whether it be visual or photography because you, the, the 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 scope's just going to be going all over the sort of place so you've got to be careful about um you know about the wind so you want to look out for that as well so they're the sort of three main things there's other things to be to, to take care of so there's things like um humidity dew points freezing points that sort of thing um so that impacts say say if you've got a um if you've got something like a, a one of these <laughs> one of these you know and you need one of them so you need a dew shield so um you know if you've got a refractor and you know there's issues with dew and you know there's going to be a lot of condensation or or humidity then at least you can be prepared for that uh, eventuality. Um, so, you know, and then obviously the final thing about all of this is that you just have to look out the window sometimes and just use your nose because, um, you know, with the best will in the world, these things are predicting things. They don't know exactly like, at, you know, 8.57 on a Tuesday night. They don't know exactly what the conditions are going to be. So um, you've got to just take it, uh, take a sort of average of all of these sort of tools and just go, yeah, I, OK, I'm looking out the window. I can see that there's stuff coming, there's stuff going, whatever, whatever. And just, um, you know, just a bit of, bit, of, bit of common sense. But I hope those sites are going to be helpful for you. I find them invaluable. They help me plan my next few days sessions. So I know that if the consensus of opinion is it's going to be clear or clearish, <clears throat> I can plan my targets. If I know it's going to be a bit dodgy, then I can go for sort of easier targets like planets, the moon, etc. that don't need hours of clear skies. So you can do it from that. But I hope that's useful. Um, and if it's, uh, you know, if anybody's got any suggestions for sites that they use or for, you know, tips and tricks, um, I'm always learning. Every day is a school day. Thanks for watching.